It's time for Hands on Macintosh. I know you love fonts. Today, I'm going to combine Brew, the command line, and fonts to show you how to automatically install every font you'd ever want. To your heart's delight, next on Hands on Mac. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time for Hands on Macintosh. Uh, got a great response from a few episodes ago when I showed you how to install those free fonts in Catalina. If you missed that, episode 13, go back in time. You're also going to have a little other homework because this is going to combine a number of different techniques that we've learned in previous episodes. First of all, uh, using the terminal, episode 4, we talk about the terminal command, the command line on Macintosh and iTerm. Episode uh, 8, we talk about Homebrew, which is a package manager for Macintosh. So we're going to combine that information and show you how you can install fonts, some really good open source and free fonts on the Macintosh with just a little typing. Command line on a Macintosh is one of the things that makes it special. You actually have access to a Unix-like, it pretty much is Unix, operating system. All the Unix programs work, uh, and, and all the Unix-style commands work. So if you've used Linux or another Unix, you're going to feel pretty at home on the Macintosh once you open that terminal window. As I mentioned uh, in that earlier episode, episode 4, I like to use uh, a terminal program called iTerm, and I like to use a, uh, uh, a command line processor, not Bash, which comes with most Linuxes and came with the Mac for years, not Z Shell, which comes with Catalina today, but a more modern uh, shell called Fish. It's a command line processor that has a lot of modern and nice features. So don't be thrown here. I am going to be using Fish, but what I'm typing will work just as well. You do need Brew. Go back and install Brew if you haven't done that already. That's the best and easiest way to install a huge variety of applications, both command line applications and even graphic applications. Many of the apps that you install today from the App Store or from other places can be installed with Brew. And the reason it's nice to have that in the command line is you can write a script that will automatically set up your Mac, install all the things you want. Just run that script, go have a cup of coffee, uh, and you're done. I actually have added many of the commands I'm about to show you to my setup script because I like to start with some nice fonts. So you've got Brew installed. You've updated your Brew. Let's go to the command line. And this is what always scares everybody. That's just that blinking cursor on a complete blank page. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. You're already a command line hero if you've watched some of those other episodes. We are going to want to do one thing quickly before we get too far into this. We're going to want to set up fonts in our brew. Now, presumably, you've installed brew's cask feature. If you haven't, uh, first thing, as always, with brew is to type brew update. That makes sure that, whoops, not up dart. That doesn't do anything, brew. <laughs> Brew, this is I, my typing should be better considering how much I use the command line. Brew update. Make sure that you've got all the latest brew um, uh, uh, mirror lists on there. All the information about what files are available, the latest versions, and so forth. Uh, you do that every time you use brew because you don't want to install an old application. You only want to install new stuff. We're also going to turn on a feature of brew called casks, and you do that with the brew tap command. And we're going to type brew tap homebrew slash cask. That actually installs the capability to run casks. Casks, uh, most of the times when you're using brew, you're actually going to install software from source code. You're going to build it. You're going to compile it. Uh, that's kind of the old school way of doing things. You can install pre-compiled binaries using Cask. Many of these will be graphics programs like Firefox. Many of them will be command line programs. All the fonts are stored as Casks. 
You don't build them, you just download them. So we have to make sure we've got Cask installed. You probably do. I did. I was ready to do that. And then you might also want to try, type brew tap homebrew cask dash fonts. That will add the font library uh, to brew. And that's where you're going to get all your fonts. There are literally hundreds of fonts available on homebrew so you see it's updating it and now we're ready to go the easiest way to find out what's on here is to type brew search and the word font dash all the fonts uh, uh, in brew are uh, start with the name font dash and stand back after you type that because you're gonna see a really long list of fonts I'll show you a command useful command line uh, tool here that makes uh, command line's a little easier. This is the pipe character. It's the character above the backslash on the right side of your keyboard. It's just an up-down line. We call that a pipe in uh, Unix world because it means take the output of the first command, in this case, brew search, and pipe it into another program. This is actually one of the secret powers of all Unixes, including Mac OS, is OS uh, 10, is the ability to take the output of one file and send it to another file. So I'm going to take the output of Bruce Search font, which as you could see was a lot of fonts, a really long list, too many to fit on the screen, and I'm going to pipe it through another program called Less. Less actually paginates it, so if I hit return, I'll get the first page. And now as I press the, press the space bar, I'm paging through this. Uh, if I press the B key, it'll go back. So I can go all the way to the top just by hitting the B key again and again and again. You see there's a lot of fonts. They're in alphabetical order. Uh, there's one. It looks like there's one font that just is bird font, but most of the rest are font dash and then the name of the font. Some of them you recognize. I just saw Arial in there. Some of them you won't recognize. Some of them are wild. Um, but if you're a programmer, there's one type of font you're going to be really interested in, and that's the nerd font. So we're going to do a new search that's brew search nerd dash font. Nerd fonts in brew terms are the fixed width fonts, the programmer fonts. And many programmers collect programmer fonts. These are all fixed width programmer fonts like Daddy Time Mono and Deja Vu Sans Mono, which is actually the default terminal font in many versions of Linux, including, I think, Ubuntu. Fira Code is one of my favorite nerd fonts. So let's install that. Let's uh, hit Q to get out of the pager. We're still in less. And we're going to do brew install Fira. Oh, do you remember what it was? I'm going to have to do a search again. Let's do it again. Brew search Fira. Fira is an amazing font written by a programmer who uh, is a, a font artist. And you can see there's quite a few. Um, let's just start with brew install Fira dash, I'm sorry, font dash Fira dash code. Now, this is like installing any other program uh, through brew. It's going to install the binary, so it's just going to download it. Oh, I forgot the word, and most important word. It's a cask. All right. In fact, remember I said that it was casks? <laughs> so that is one thing you need to understand with brew. Install, generally install from source. If I'm using a cask that's a pre-built source, you'll have to say brew cask install, and now it'll install. And you see it's downloading it, and it's installed. Well, actually, you know what? I already had a Fira code installed. We can verify that this is actually working by going, and there it is. In fact, I already had Fira code. This is a really nice one. I recommend for anybody who wants a very nice uh, font in their terminal, Fira code. In fact, that's what I'm using right now. Retina is an excellent font. Well, let's try some other uh, nerd fonts. Did you see any others that you thought looked pretty good? Um, boy, there's a lot of them. Let me do, um, what was that, daddy time? By the way, notice what I'm doing here. I'm just typing the up and down arrow. This is a really nice command line search. You can search through the history of your command line until you find the one. So you don't have to retype it. I'm going to hit brew search 
nerd font one more time and uh, pipe that through less. And let's look at one we like. What was what was it? Here's a little quick tip. Let's this time copy it so I don't have to <laughs> retype it again. All right. Now I'm going to quit out of the pager, type brew, cask, install, paste in font, daddy time mono. I have no idea what this font's going to look like. <laughs> I'm going to show you after we install this another trick that is uh, dependent on fish and the fish shell, but you can easily make this work in other shells. You're just going to have to change the syntax a little bit. All right, we've got Daddy Time Mono installed. Let's let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's kind of cool. Oh, that's kind of a neat font. Look, it's got little serifs, but because it's a mono font, I could actually use this in my terminal, or I could uh, use this in anywhere with you know email anywhere where I want a fixed width font. That is a nice looking font. What if we wanted to go crazy? What if we wanted to install all of the fonts? Well, most command line shells will allow you to write a program to do that. Uh, I'm going to do it right now using the fish syntax. I'll leave it as an exercise for you on how to do it in Bash. But it's, if anybody's ever programmed, uh, you'll probably recognize this syntax. We're going to say four, and we're going to say dollar sign font that's actually a variable in and then i'm going to use in parenthesis this command brew search nerd font brew oops cask install now there's that variable dollar sign font and then end this command is a dangerous command <laughs> when i hit return it's going to download, go through, search for all the fonts that begin with the words nerd font or contain the words nerd font and install them. There may be some non-font files that have that in there. Of course, uh, they won't install. I think there's a PDF somewhere in there. Uh, we might get an error. Shall we try it? Shall we go? Let's see. Okay, now it's doing it. All right. We should see more fonts pop in here. Uh, it's doing an update. There we go. First. Okay, now it's doing it. Okay, this is going to take a little while. <laughs> uh, there's quite a few nerd fonts here, and uh, each one of these is going to take a little while. Maybe I should regret doing this. But you can see it's adding as we go to each of the fonts. This list is going to get longer and longer and longer as I add free. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. It should say now copying a million fonts. It should. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. It takes so long per font, and there are probably 150 fonts. Oh, my God. Well, let's take a break. <laughs> We're going to let Brew churn away there installing fonts. I may regret this. You could literally install every font available in Brew using that for loop. Uh, that's a dangerous thing to do. I recommend you do it judiciously. You're probably better off just installing fonts one by one. But it sure is fun to be able to type one command and install hundreds of fonts all at once. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Your IT department has a big job. More devices, more applications, and now remote workforces. That means all new threats, all new regulations. It makes strong security extremely complex. Fortunately, there's LastPass. LastPass secures every entry point. It unifies access and authentication, increases your security, but your employees love it. It doesn't impact productivity, and it makes password security effortless. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Well, we're still installing fonts. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> the nerd font collection is actually awesome because these are all fixed-width programming fonts, some of them very unusual. As far as I can tell, none of them are actually harmful. You see, I already have a much longer list than I did before, including an actual font called nerd font. Uh, there are quite a few variations of that. 
Anonymous, not anonymous, Arulent Sans Mono. If you love fonts, you've just entered font heaven. Actually, I kind of like that daddy time. <laughs> I think that's really kind of a, a pretty font. I don't know where I'm going to use it. We're going to let this run. And in, oh, I don't know, a half an hour or so, we'll have a whole lot of new fonts on our Macintosh. Uh, boy, we actually have covered a lot of ground here. Not only the fact that you can install fonts from the command line, but how to use brew to do it using the brew cask command, which is a great way to install binaries of all kinds on brew. It's worth looking at the documentation for brew. It's very powerful. I'm always discovering new features. Really fantastic. And then uh, I showed you a little fish trick to allow us to execute a single command hundreds of times the for loop uh, i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you don't do go too font crazy and uh, i will be back next friday with another hands on mac i'm leo laporte thanks for joining me we'll see you then one more twit well check out hands on ios twit.tv slash hoi where i teach you all about iphones ipads airpods apple watches and so much more if you want to get the most out of your device then you got to check out hands on ios twit.tv slash hoi